Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the premiere performance of the new Lawrence and Lee play with music, The Pirate of New Orleans, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest star, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another musical first is brought to you transcribed by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, sir, we have a brand new operetta for you tonight. Dorothy Warren Show will be the unforgettable Suzanne, and I shall be Jean Lafitte. The Pirate of New Orleans. Down in New Orleans on the old Gulf Coast, there's a walking, talking, singing gold. When the fog sits on the river and the moon is aching through the clouds, Jean Lafitte walks through New Orleans town, remembering the days he was a pirate king. Gentlemen, I propose a toast to the most daring, the most courageous, the most romantic buccaneer in the memory of man, myself. <laughs> Uh, have we no majesty on Grand Terre, Lafitte? Why should we have? Show me a man who's my equal, Dominique, and I'll be modest. <laughs> All we know about you is stories, Lafitte. Which is true? Well, it depends. What have you heard? Is it true that you came from Guadeloupe and moved to the town of Gumbo Soup? I've heard a lot of people speak that you came from the Isle of Martinique. Perhaps. And your mere Grand like the king and queen, what guests of Madame Guillotine. Silence! Charlotte the Lafitte, is it really true? As true as your name is Dominique Q, you see, Louis, with your cut-off nose, there's not a man who really knows. And I'll tell you why, most true you have. Holding up myself. <laughs> <laughs> Lift your cups, man. A toast. To the sea, to the sky, to the look in your woman's eye. With a seafaring tail and a wind in our sail. With a good glass of ale, life will never grow stale. Till we don't. To the moon, to the sun, to the work that we've never done. But we laugh at the rain as we drink our champagne. And our talk is profane as we sing this refrain. We'll have fun.
Where do we travel tonight, Lafitte? Is there a Spanish merchantman waiting to be relieved of its silver? No, Dominique. I'm traveling alone tonight. All of you will remain here on Grand Terre. I alone will slip into New Orleans. Is it safe, Lafitte? Governor Claiborne has set a price on your head. There are notices all over the city. I wish to read one of those notices and laugh at it. Also, tonight, I wish to dance. Dance? There is a masquerade ball at the governor's mansion. I wish to hear the latest rumors about my closest friend, Marcel. <laughs> I shall wear a mask and go in the disguise of uh, a respectable citizen. <laughs> How beautifully you dance, mademoiselle. Merci, monsieur. Won't you tell me your name? Ah, this is a night of disguises. Please. Very well. It is Suzanne Martin. Mm, Suzanne Martin. (laughs) It rhymes. And your name, monsieur? Napoleon Bonaparte, Emperor of the World. (laughs) (laughs) With you in my arms, I feel like an emperor. Listen to the minuet. How lovely it is. Yes. Monsieur Beethoven is all the rage, you know, on both sides of the Atlantic. Oh? If ever I leave this city, I shall think always of the cotillion, through the happy dancing hour. When the twilight we pretend to see, Mademoiselle Suzanne, would you come out to the balcony with me? Mm, one cannot refuse the request of an emperor. <laughs> uh, you have no idea how beautiful you look in the moonlight, even behind the alluring mask. Mm, monsieur must certainly be an American, for they are the only people in the world who tell lies almost as beautifully as Frenchmen. I am everything, Mademoiselle, and nothing. I'm homesick for a home I have never had. Oh? Have you listened to the city, Suzanne? Listen to it? Ah, the sounds of the river, the street cries. Down Perdido Alley, there is an old Creole woman with a basket of berries balanced on her head. Uh, the city is full of music. I know why your chimney won't draw. Even the chimney sweep sings. You know, I'd like to be a chimney sweep, Suzanne. Must be something like flying. A bird with dirty wings. And a very strange song.
Do you understand, Suzanne, why a man would wish for a home in the city of music? Where is your home, monsieur? Attention, ladies and gentlemen. The governor. Perhaps we better go inside and see what's happening. My friend, Suzanne? I wish to warn all of you to be on your guard. Jean Lafitte is somewhere here in New Orleans tonight. As you know, I have posted notices throughout the city offering a reward of $500 for the delivery of Jean Lafitte to the sheriff of the parish of Orleans. Well, look here. Alongside each of my notices, the scoundrel has posted this. I offer $1,500 for the delivery of Governor Claiborne to Grand Terre. Signed, Jean Lafitte. <laughs> Monsieur le Governor. Yes, young man. Let me be the first to volunteer. Lead a party to capture this devil. I thank you, young man. Do not go into the streets alone, ladies. I bid you good night, Suzanne. Good night, monsieur. Be careful. Tell me, where can I find you if by chance some evening soon the music and the moonlight lure me back to the city? Here. I am governess to the governor's small son. Oh, governor's governess. <laughs> I like that. I will see you tomorrow night, Suzanne. For I have high doubts that I will succeed by then capturing a man as clever, as daring, as brilliant as Jean Lafitte. Good night, monsieur. Until then, Suzanne, I offer a toast. To the sea, to the sky, to the look in a woman's eye. For the girl to be whole who is finer than gold. We shall always be bold and we'll never go. Till we don't. Turn in a moment with the second act of The Pirate of New Orleans. In this America of ours, which depends so much on its vast system of transportation for both commerce and defense, which form of transportation do you think is most important? That was the question a well known public opinion research organization recently asked men and women from all parts of the country. And as you might expect, most of them answered the railroads. Why did they feel that way? Well, they were thinking, as we all are these days, of the importance of national defense. And it's obvious that only the railroads have the capacity to handle the tremendous transportation job involved in the long-distance mass movements of men and defense material. In World War II, for example, the railroads hauled more than 90% of all war freight and 97% of all organized military travel. Equally important is the fact that our peacetime economy is built around the railroad freight train. Now, you may have heard it said that other forms of transportation haul more tonnage than railroads. But the only way you could figure that is to leave out the all-important factor of the distance the freight is hauled. In other words, you would have to count a ton of freight moved one mile across town by truck, the same as a ton of freight moved clear across the country by railroad. Actually, of course, when you count both tons and the distance those tons are hauled, you find, according to the figures of the Interstate Commerce Commission, that the railroads last year performed nearly five times as much intercity freight transportation service as all the motor trucks put together. The railroads, in fact, moved more tons of freight more miles than all other forms of transportation combined and did it at charges which average far less than those of any other agency offering a general range of transportation service. Now, those facts are mighty important to you. Just imagine what it would be like if any considerable part of the freight that now moves over the privately owned steel highways of the railroads were to travel on the public highways you use and pay for with your tax dollars. And the more of America's freight that moves over the steel highways of the railroads, the less will be the cost of public highways, and the greater will be your enjoyment and safety when you use them. Here is Act Two of the new Lawrence and Lee play with music, The Pirate of New Orleans, starring Gordon McRae as Lafitte and Dorothy Warrenshold as Suzanne. A lot of stories about Mr. Jean Lafitte, but this one we know is true because it's written down in the history books. Mr. Jean Lafitte, he liked the Yanks, and so we got. Yeah. 
Like a good boy. All right. Suzanne. Monsieur, how did you get in here? Through the window. Who's that, Suzanne? A friend, Georges. A very nice man. I'm putting the boy to sleep. Well, I'll help you. Sing me to sleep, Suzanne. All right, Georges. about the marvelous things you can see and hear once you sweep your cares away and start to dream. Eh? enough stories for tonight, George. Just one more. Let me. As George, once upon a time, there was a pirate. A terrible pirate? Oh, very terrible. But nobody liked him very much. He didn't even like himself. And when at night he wished to sweep the dream path clear, he had no place to lay his head. He wished more than anything to belong someplace, in a country or in a city in a parish. So he thought that if just once he could do a special favor for the people of a city, perhaps one day they might think of him as a, a fellow citizen. And the boy's asleep? Yes. Yes, but I am suddenly awake, monsieur. What do you mean, Suzanne? How you told that story with the tears inside of you. Well, Suzanne, I... You are Lafitte. You are Jean Lafitte. Does it frighten you? Oh, no. No, but you must leave quickly before they find you here. Suzanne, I have defended burning ships at sea, island fortresses, and half a world of oceans. I am not afraid of what might happen to me in the nursery. Suzanne, are you all right in there? Yes, Governor. Please, climb out of the window quickly. They'll kill you. I thank you for your concern, Suzanne. Go to the door. Open it and let the Governor in. No. Please, do as I say. God said he... Thought he saw a shadow, and so I'm checking every room. Just... <gasps> Lafitte. Yes, servant, Governor Clyborne. What are you doing in my house? The boy. Is my boy all right? Uh, he sleeps. He dreams. Monsieur Lafitte sang him a lullaby. Oh, Suzanne, you permitted this. There's a price on this man's head. <laughs> There's a price on your head, too, Governor. Uh, it just depends on which poster you read. Why? <laughs> Five hundred dollars, really, Governor, for my aid. It's hardly the price of a haircut. <laughs> Go out! Just one moment, Governor. 
This morning at dawn, I was back on Grand Terre. And I had a visit from the British. Commodore Patterson offered me thirty thousand dollars in gold and a captaincy in the British Navy, if I would lead their ships into New Orleans Harbor. Are you here to bargain, Lafitte? What do you want from us? Forty thousand and an admiral's braid? My men and I will join the American forces and aid you in repelling the invasion. All we ask is an act of oblivion for all that we have done up till now. I do not make bargains with pirates. Then I bid you good night. I shall exit the way I came. Bless you, Suzanne. What happened? Everything's all right, Georges. Well, the story. Go on with the story. How does it end? To this story, Georges, I am afraid there is no ending. Naturally, General Jackson, I refuse, Governor Claiborne. There might be situations where pirates could be right and governors could be wrong. I cannot imagine such a situation, General. You don't have to imagine it, Governor. It's happening right now. Communicate with our feet at once. What? The United States government accepts his offer. Sing this song with the flag we are flying. The Yankee Doodle, keep it up. The Yankee Doodle, sound the fire. Sing, God knows. Sing, Paris. Mighty music, kind of step, and we'll be good beyond. I have a communication from the President of the United States. I, James Madison, do proclaim a free and full pardon to every pirate who participated in the Battle of New Orleans and do declare they are citizens of the United States in the full enjoyment of their liberty. Welcome to the Victory Ball, Citizen Lafitte. I thank you, Suzanne. Oh, just listen to the music. I am certain no dance will ever replace the minuet. How could it? Is that the thief of the high seas dancing with Mademoiselle Suzanne? Yes, the pirate. <laughs> Imagine the insolence. Suzanne, I... Oh, don't listen to them, Jean, please. Uh, no, I, sh I shall not make a scene, Suzanne. I shall not spoil the pretty picture of dancing hours... But I do not belong here. Come with me, Jean, out onto the balcony. No, Suzanne, it is no use. My friend, I cannot say to you what I feel. Perhaps I can tell you with music. Suzanne, but I do not belong here. 
Presidents may make proclamations, but I shall always be Lafitte, the pirate. Where are you going? Back to the high seas. Dominique has an idea that perhaps we might rescue the great Napoleon from the island of St. Helena. I shall wander with the winds, Suzanne. No. The man is what he is. Perhaps someday I shall find a home. Lafitte. Yes, Dominique. Why do you stand here on deck and gaze across the water? What are you listening for? I don't know. Distant music, perhaps. A minuet, maybe. back in just a moment. And meanwhile, our thanks to Thurl Ravenscroft, who was the ballad singer, to Bill Conrad, who was Dominique Yu, to Herb Butterfield, William Johnstone, and Richard Beals, and to our entire company. The Pirate of New Orleans was written especially for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? Next Thursday marks the 10th anniversary of the Army Transportation Corps which directed the movement of the millions of soldiers and the millions of tons of freight they required, both in the United States and overseas during World War II. And since the outbreak of war in Korea, the Transportation Corps is again moving men and materiel where they are needed when they are needed. The American railroads, which work closely with the Transportation Corps by providing dependable mass transportation service, proudly salute this youngest of the Army Technical Services on its 10th birthday. Dorothy, you were wonderful. (laughs) <laughs> What's on the show train next week, Gordon? Well, Lucille Norman will be our guest, and we're going to recall the wonderful days of vaudeville and the early days of radio. The show is called Starlight. All aboard! Well, folks, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next Monday and Starlight, this is Gordon McRae saying good night. <laughs> was transcribed in Hollywood. Gordon McRae can be seen starring in Warner Brothers' About Face. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroad. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Next, it's H.C.O. Pinza as guest of the Telephone Hour on NBC.